how important is training of any kind to the metabolism and, and what is it uh, kind of doing for us? I know you talk a lot about glucose and insulin resistance and, and that kind of thing. So uh, how important is it for us to get in some sort of exercise? Yeah, it allows, uh, it, it's tremendously important. Um, and, and if, and I'll, I'll contain my answer to strictly focus on, on insulin and, and metabolic health, but the benefits, of course, go far beyond that. And so anyone listening would know that I'm, I'm not attempting to answer this in, an, in, in as fully comprehensive way as I could. Uh, but with, with exercise, part of the magic is that you now have activated, if you will, an insulin independent mechanism of controlling glucose. So the muscle that we have is responsible for consuming up to, if not more than 80% of all the glucose when we've eaten a meal. So if someone goes and eats a hamburger and fries, you would see that their glucose levels would climb. And as, as the glucose starts to come back down, almost all of that drop in glucose in the blood is because the muscles have started pulling in that glucose and insulin stimulates that glucose uptake in a, in a typical setting of we, we're eating and we're just lounging around now after the meal. But in contrast, when you are physically active and you've, you've engaged that, that, that contraction and relaxation of muscles, um, now the muscle fibers have an insulin independent mechanism uh, to pull in the glucose. Basically, those same doors that would have only been opening when insulin would come and knock on them now open on their own because the muscle is basically mm. demanding it. It's, it's essentially telling the body, my need for energy right now is so great that I am not going to wait for insulin to tell me to pull in that glucose. I'm just going to do it. But part of the so, so that's that's a, a benefit there. You are lowering your glucose, and that means insulin can come down. And keeping insulin low is the key to maintaining insulin sensitivity and reducing the risk of all the diseases that come with insulin resistance. It's also the key to being lean. And if I may be so bold, it's the key to longevity, but that's a bit of a tangent. But but nevertheless, you you exercise, you work the muscle, Whatever it is, whatever it is, you're working that muscle, in, uh, glucose will come down and insulin will come down. And insulin is low during exercise and it needs to be low. If insulin were elevated during exercise, it would be telling the body to not be using energy. It'd be telling the fat cells to be pulling in energy rather than releasing the fat to be used. It would be telling the liver to store, even the muscle, it'd be telling the liver and the muscle to store glucose as glycogen rather than mobilize that glucose and use it for fuel. So, High insulin would be antithetical to the energy mobilization that we want during exercise. Now, after exercise, oh, yeah, sure, high insulin may be beneficial, although that is debated. That is absolutely debated. This idea of you need to stack some carbs with your protein to help the anabolic effect. The, in fact, the evidence uh, challenges that idea, but, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Nevertheless, during exercise, you are mobilizing energy. And that means insulin must be low. And so the, the fact that the muscle has a way of getting that glucose in, in this state of high energy demand and, and, and low insulin just sort of is a testament to how clever the body is designed. So an individual that's like, let's say an individual's out of shape, they're big. Um, typically that individual's insulin resistant and now they're trying to get into a weight training routine and work out and, and eat less food. You were just mentioning that, um, when insulin is high, when an individual is working out, it, it's negative. But that means that in most situations when these people are working out, their insulin is high. How can they avoid that? Do they need to try to fast before working out? Don't eat before working out? Is there just the amount of time that they need to become insulin sensitive? How, how, how do they navigate that? Yeah, that's a great question. What a good insight. Yeah, so some peop people that are insulin resistant would naturally have a higher level of insulin. Their kind of baseline insulin is a little higher. Uh, so they're sort of chronically, maybe even multiples higher, two or three or four times higher than, than the average insulin sensitive person. But that's kind of at the moment, they're, they're normal. And so if insulin comes down for them, uh, their fasting insulin may be at 20, but an insulin sensitive person's fasting insulin may be at five. In that person who's insulin resistant, that 20 level 
is is kind of normal at the moment. And because their muscles are insulin resistant, that 20 is is going to be okay. They're not going to, you know, force themselves into a hypoglycemic um, event when they exercise. So them having a chronically higher insulin, uh, because they're insulin resistant, it'll still be higher during exercise, but also because of the insulin resistance, that will ensure they don't become hypoglycemic, you know, where, where uh, the, the liver isn't pumping out glucose and the muscles are pulling it in. There, all of that is compromised in a way that kind of maintains homeostasis, if you will. However, over time, in the wake of that exercise session, they've become a little more insulin sensitive. They do it again, they become a little more insulin sensitive. And so slowly, I, actually not so slowly in some instances, it can be profoundly quick within just you know weeks. In fact, um, their insulin will start to come down. Now, importantly, as we are kind of converging these topics with insulin sensitivity and exercise, a study in humans found that when uh, you took insulin resistant people and they exercised, if they finished their exercise with a carbohydrate rich insulin spiking meal, they mitigated the insulin sensitizing effects of the exercise session. That is such a note of caution because as we see in gyms so often, you'll see some person who's likely insulin resistant on that elliptical machine and they're just working their guts out, but then they're sipping like a fruit smoothie mm -hmm. or some other kind of nonsense unfortunately or the first thing they do is go start chugging gatorade because they've they they drank the kool-aid uh so to speak and they think it's going to help them no no uh if you if someone is exercising uh with the intention of improving their metabolic health a part of which or a big part of which will be improving their insulin sensitivity don't finish your workout with carbs or feel like you need to even be eating the carbs during the workout that is such an overblown uh, really, probably just a marketing. It's just a way to sell Gatorade or other such stuff.